Hey everybody and welcome back to the Dev Marketer channel. I'm your host, J.A. Curtis, and this is the Getting Started with Git series, part number seven, okay? Now, part number seven today, we're gonna be learning about a new command called git clone. And git clone is a very, very helpful command. It's something that you're gonna find yourself using quite a bit, all right? Now, up to this point, what we've always been doing when we started working with git is we kind of, our, our workflow up to this point has been we start a project, we start creating code on our local computer, right? And we, you know, we're working on it on our local computer and we decide, hey, we wanna start tracking this, we wanna start sharing this code, and that's that kind of thing. So then we initialize the git repository, we ran that git init command, and we then we would run git push, and we'd push it up to GitHub, and then it was on GitHub, and now we took the code that was on our local computer and we shared it with the world on GitHub, right? And that was through um, basically starting in the local computer, using git init, and then git push to get it up to GitHub. Now what happens though, if you already find something on GitHub and you wanna start contributing to that, or you just wanna start messing with the code? One of the best ways to learn as a programmer is to look at other people's code. So sometimes you might just wanna take a look at their project, um, or you might want to do something like open source <laughs> community where you, um, you grab the project, you find add your own contributions to it and you push it back up to github and you know contribute to the art to the uh, uh contribute to it that way so um anyway there's there's lots of reasons why you may not start um you you know you might actually be grabbing onto an existing repository that exists and that's not on your local computer and what do you do in that case um what if it's already on github and you want to now get the code and jump into the project um you know where it's currently at on github but it's not on your local computer. Well, that's where git clone comes in. So if you ever are starting a project or a pro you ever wanna start working on a project that's already been started by somebody else, you would use git clone to basically, um, it not only copies all of the code from the server, from the cloud, in this case, GitHub, that's what we'd be doing today, but you can do it with anything else, GitLab, Bitbucket, or your private repository that you've created. Um, it all works exactly the same. And anyway, it's gonna download all the code from the from the cloud um, onto your local computer so that you can then start working with it and you can pick up where the project currently is. You're not starting from scratch, okay? So after to this one command, you're gonna be able to know how to basically make it work both ways. You can start with code on your local computer and push it up to GitHub, or you can start with a project that's already on GitHub You'll pull it down to your local computer, work on it, and then you can later, then you can start contributing and pushing it back up to GitHub and so forth, okay? So this is basically how you start working with a project that's already been started. That's the concept behind git clone, all right? We're basically gonna clone the repository on our local computer so we have access to it locally, all right? Now let me show you real quick how to do this. It's a very basic command, but I just wanna make sure you guys understand it fully, how it works, all that kind of stuff before you're messing around with it or doing any of that kind of stuff, okay? Okay, so real quick, I'm uh, over here on GitHub and I just want you guys to basically, um, something I don't know if I mentioned before, um, it's been a while since my last video so I can't remember, um, but there's this awesome part of GitHub called github.com slash explore. And these are all the open source community projects um, on GitHub. These are kind of some of the trending and popular ones and they've got all sorts of stuff on here. They always showcase little groups of projects that exist um, around the world. So like here's a bunch of projects that are made in Africa that are being showcased, you know, actual programming languages that are built and hosted on GitHub because sometimes the languages themselves are open source, which is awesome. And you can actually find those languages here. So here's like Apple Swift, that's a open source project, Ruby, PHP, obviously, all these are open source languages and they're all hosted here on GitHub, which is so cool that theoretically you could you can copy, we could clone that down and start contributing to PHP and making PHP better. That's the power of open source. So anyway, if you go to github.com slash explore, there's all this cool stuff here. What I wanted to do is just come here and find a project that we can practice on. We can clone and kind of practice on. So I'm gonna come over here to trending. We're gonna click on trending and we're gonna go down to the PHP libraries. Um, it's just what I'm familiar with, but you can we can do whatever. There's stuff in all sorts of languages. Let's sort it by this week. So these are what's been trending this week in PHP. You can see that Docker is obviously the number one most popular thing that's been trending this week. Uh, Laravel's obviously there to number two. There's all sorts of cool stuff down here. Um, let's just go down and find something cool. How about this Slack bot? This looks cool. So it says a framework agnostic PHP library to build Slack bots. So this actually looks pretty cool. This would be something I would be interested in contributing to. So the question is, it's here on GitHub. How do I 
basically get this code so I can start playing with it, so I can mess with it, or so that we can contribute to it. Um, how do you jump into this project, okay? Well, that's using the git clone command. And the git clone, com the git clone command is very simple. It's, uh, it's just going to be basically git clone and then the URL. All right, and that's it. That's all it takes to get clones. So let me just show you how it works. Now, first things first, we need to make sure that we're in the right folder before we run a git clone um, command. So for example, here we're at the root of my my computer. Um, I don't want, if I run a git clone, it's gonna drag the files and copy the files over into this folder, and I don't want that. So we need to put it into a new folder. I like to store all my web projects in a folder called sites. So let's move into that. So we're gonna do CD sites, like that. You can see I got a bunch of other projects here um, uh, in my sites folder. And so right from inside this sites folder, this is where I wanna run my git clone. When I run git clone, it's gonna make another folder inside of here um, for that project. So I don't need to make another, like an empty folder. I can actually just do it in the folder I want the project folder to be in, if that makes sense. So if I were to run it here, then um, it'll pull, it'll create a folder for me and put it right alongside all these other folders because all these are folders here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do it. So we're gonna run git clone inside of my sites folder. So it comes into the sites folder, git clone, and then let's get the URL for that project. So we're gonna go back over to GitHub. We're gonna come over here to this button called clone or download. We're gonna copy this and we're going to um, get the URL here. You can click this button or you can just copy you know, control C, whatever. Um, one thing to note is I'm gonna have this, like it looks like an email address. This is the SSH command. I have SSH set up as my preferred method on GitHub. If um, you can switch between SSH and HTTP up here, so you might see what looks like a web address or an email address kind of thing. It's, it's SSH versus HTTPS. Don't worry about it. It really doesn't matter which one you use. Um, I think if you do SSH, you don't have to type and you've got if you do SSH and you've got SSH set up on GitHub, you don't need to type any username or password. And we covered this in the last video. So if you wanna go back to part six, you can take a look at understanding how to use SSH. Um, but you can always use HTTPS. It's gonna ask you for your username and password, I think. Okay, so anyway, uh, I got the URL here. This is the URL for this project, okay? So let's go ahead and just get this. We're gonna copy it. And we're gonna come back over to our uh, terminal. We're gonna run git clone, and then we're gonna paste in this URL like this. And it's now gonna go ahead and copy and clone this Slack bot uh, project. So let's go ahead and click enter. You can see it's cloning it, copying everything. It's done, pretty simple. Let's now run an ls command just to take a look at all my projects. You can see up here now we have a folder called Slack bot. And up here we just had a folder called Slack. I was messing around with Slack, so I happen to have my own project called Slack. But um, we now have a new folder called Slackbot, and if we CD into Slackbot um, and LS now here, you can see we've got a README. In fact, let's do an LS LA, just so we can see everything, including the hidden files. We have a git, a git ignore, a PHP CS, style CI, YAML, Travis YAML, and then README, composer, PHP, source, test. So you can see, this, this follows the exact thing here. We got our PHP unit, we've got our Travis YAML, style CI YAML, PHP CS, git ignore. All this stuff here, the folder for source and tests, it's all copied over exactly in here. Um, and that's the beauty of the clone. Git, clone, and then the URL, and we can copy everything over. And now we have an exact copy on our computer that we can now mess with. Okay, so there I can do several things here. I could pull this into, say, Atom. Let's open this project up into Atom. And now I've got, the actual code right here that I could start contributing to. Okay, so these are all the code that he already has here on GitHub. I can now make work with the project and edit it. Okay, so that's what's really cool. That's how easy it is to get access to this project. The other thing I wanna show you is that it doesn't just copy the code, okay? There's a lot more than just code being copied. Um, every single commit, every tag and release, every piece of information that is stored in this, um, repository is now also on our computer. So we could run something like git log, and you can see now that we've got, these are um, the different, what's it called? Um, the different commit messages that he's had. All these are the different commits. This is who did it. Um, all this information is here. And um, obviously we can scroll through these. You're familiar with git log. We talked about this a while ago. Um, but basically, 
we have access to the entire repository, all the metadata, not just the code, not just a copy of the code, but all those details, all the branch details, every commit detail is all on here. So we could revert back to specific commits, even though he did these commits potentially weeks ago. I mean, this was, well, this is actually all very frequently. This is all just a couple days ago, but I mean, you could go back weeks and weeks into the past before you ever had the code on your computer and revert back to a point in time on this code base at that because he was saving and committing the code on his computer. When we ran a clone, we actually have access to all that metadata and we can revert back to any of those commits just like we could if we did it if we did it directly on our computer. So that's the power to understand with git clone is that git clone is not just a copy. Yeah, it copies all the code down, that's nice, but it's literally a clone, an exact replica of the Git repository. So all the power that we have when we work locally on our computer, all the power that Git gives us, we now have access to that when we run a clone, okay? So that's really, really awesome. Okay, and you saw how easy it is to do it. Git, clone, and then the URL, and that's it. Last thing before we finish up the video, um, by the way, if you get into the Git log here, you need to run, you need to type the letter Q to get out of it. Otherwise, it just keeps kind of scrolling. Okay, so the last thing here is if I just CD up a folder and then run LS again, you can see here that we've got this folder. It created a folder for us called Slackbot, right? Now you might wonder, how did it, why did it call it Slackbot? Why not something else? Why didn't it ask me what to call it or anything like that? And that's a good question. Last thing I wanted to cover was that. And um, let me just show you real quick. Uh, the folder is always gonna be the name right here of the Git repository. That's the folder, the default folder name it's always gonna try to create. So whenever you grab this URL, you're always gonna get um, after this last slash and before the dot git, this is always gonna be the folder it tries to create, okay? So just keep that in mind when you do a git clone. Um, keep in mind two things. Keep in mind that you're in the folder you wanna save it in. So in this case, I wanna be inside my sites folder. And that way it's gonna create another folder in that folder inside of the sites folder that it stores all the you know all the code in. Um, but just put it into that folder that you want it to be sickly be in, okay? So I put it in sites folder, I run the command from my sites folder, and that way it makes a folder inside the sites folder that stores the code, okay? So just keep that in mind. Some people I see make the mistake where they'll make a new directory. They'll do here, like make a directory called slack bot one. Okay, so now we've got another folder called Slackbot1, right? And then they'll CD into Slackbot1 like this, and now they're inside of this, and then now they run git clone, thinking it's gonna copy the code into Slackbot1, but wa watch what happens. When you run this here, it's gonna clone it again for us, and now if we run an LS, you can see, in fact, let me just open it in Finder real quick, um, just so you can guys can visualize it. Um, okay, so inside of here, now you can see we've got a folder called Slackbot1, and inside of that folder, we have a folder called Slackbot, okay? So it creates a folder in the, the folder that you run the clone in, okay? So always keep that in mind. You kind of want to be up one folder. So I like to go into my... Um, I like to go into my sites folder from, you know, personally, and then I'll run it out of there. Okay, so then the last thing I want to mention is how do you rename the folder? Let's say you don't, for some reason, want to use this folder name. Um, now you know what it's going to call it at least. So if we go over to another project, let's go to uh, this project called Quarks. It's always going to name it Quarks. That's what the folder it's always going to name it. And if you go to clone here, you can see it's going to be Quarks. So it's going to be capital Q U A R X. That's going to be the name of the folder that it, it creates. So if we copy this down, let's CD up a folder. Oh, we're in our trash. Um, that's because the it got moved. So let's go to uh, sites. There we go, now we're in the right place. Now let's run a git clone in here. And we're gonna copy the quarks folder where I just grabbed. Click enter, it's gonna take a little longer because I think this is a bigger project. Oh, it was done. Okay, so um, now if we do an ls, we'll have a folder called quarks right here, okay? And again, we know that because of this right here. That's the name of the folder. So let's say we wanna name it something else. Um, in this case, this is a CMS. So let's call the folder quarks CMS. So let's go through again inside of our sites folder. We're gonna run, I'm gonna click the up arrow to go back to the command. And we're going to run git clone. Here's the URL for the Quarks project, but I want it to be in a folder called Quarks CMS. So how do I customize that? All you gotta do is click space and then add the name of the folder you wanna name. So in this case, Quarks, uh, is that right? Quarks, yes. 
CMS. Let me just make this easier to read there. So there we go. So we have git clone the, the URL and then Quark CMS. Let's go ahead and click enter and it's gonna go ahead and clone it real quick. And now when we're done like this, if I run an LS command now, you can see now I misspelled it. There's an extra, <laughs> I spelled it wrong. Okay, but that's okay. So whatever I named it as, you can see it's now saved over here. Okay, so that's basically what I wanna show you guys. That's the power of Git clone. It's not just copying the code. You have access to all the information that is stored inside that repository, just if you had done it um, locally on your computer. Okay, so with git init, that's what how you um, basically start a git repository when you started the code on your local computer and you now wanna start tracking it and pushing it up to the cloud. However, if it's already in the cloud and you want a copy for yourself, you want to start contributing to it and working with it, then you would use git clone to get the project from the cloud and move it down to your local computer so you can start working on it, okay? So that's the power of git clone. Um, hopefully that was helpful for you guys. Please stay tuned for more episodes on getting started with git so you can master um, the power that git provides, um, not only for the open source community, but for teams and workforces all around the world. So. Um, if you haven't, make sure to like, favorite, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.